you a number or a chart of the day. Let's open the Ziploc bag today. And there's the number of the day, 1.4%, which is the rate of economic growth that the World Bank is expecting in South Africa this year. And this is a little bit disappointing because the Reserve Bank, even the rating agencies, remember those ones that hit us with a series of downgrades last year, are expecting more than this, quite significantly, around 2%. So this expectation is much lower than that. And remember, 1.4% is only a meager a touch higher than the 1.3% growth that was, in fact, recorded last year. So that was actual growth. Now we're looking at predictions for this year. This has come out of the South African Economic Update released by the World Bank. The report also highlights again that South Africa is one of the most unequal societies in the world. It says the various interventions such as improving education and special integration, a spatial integration rather, could reduce the number of poor from 10.5 million currently to 4.1 million by 2030. Let's find out more. I'm joined by the World Bank's uh, Sebastian Dessus. Thank you for being with us once again. So you're talking about halving poverty. How? By reducing inequalities. And this number of 1.4 might be seen conservative, but we would like to highlight the fact that what, are, what matters more than 1.4 or 2% is the quality of growth and the inclusivity, bringing people to the jobs market, that we think is critical. So, so you mean that 1.4 you could have low quality or, or high quality? Isn't it 1.4 and that's not good enough to create jobs in this country? That's not enough to create jobs, that's not enough to reduce in inequalities, and unless the economy becomes more inclusive, you will not reach higher levels. What we are saying in this report is that in order to, re to attract investment, reduce policy uncertainty, you need to reduce inequality. Because yeah. this is inequality that drives the demand for distribution, the demand for yeah, resor yeah. resources, and that's very important. So what are the practical ways? We always talk about education. Education so. stays, stays very important. What we see in this report is something important, I think, is that inequalities has been rising uh, since 2006 in South Africa and starts going down. And it starts going down because of the education efforts that have been put to the country since 94. By bringing kids to school from poor backgrounds, now they're, they're entering the labor market in a difficult situation and it's still a long way, mm. but it's, it starts to make a difference. This needs to be amplified. And we're saying, as you said, that through education, basic education, but also financial support to students from poor backgrounds uh, to, to enter university, a lot can be done. So, so you support what our government announced uh, towards the end of last year? What we are saying is that yeah, we support the principle of it, but if you have to prioritize based on your resources, and if you really want to reduce inequality, you need to focus first on those students who are eligible to enter university, but cannot because they don't have the financial resources, yeah. and these are among the poor. And that makes a big difference in terms of inequality. You, you're talking about the, the fact that we don't have the right skills and business keeps on saying uh, even if youngsters go to university, they don't come out with the skills that business needs. So is, is that still a, a mismatch problem we have? I, 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 there is a mismatch in terms of the, the, the volume of skills which are being demanded. There is not enough of those skills. But those skills are being produced by university. In our last discussion that we had a few months ago, we were saying that you, some universities in South Africa are very good. And they are producing the skills, but not enough of them. And so that it's a matter of, of scale rather than uh, nature of education, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, spatial integration, another thing that you've highlighted. Yes, which is very important too. I mean, they, they, uh, everybody knows when you live in South Africa that distance are enormous. It takes a long time to get to a job. So that, that's, that's maybe not sufficient to get a job to bring people to reduce transportation costs or transportation time or bring more people to live in the city centers. You can densify your cities, but it's a necessary condition over the long run when people will have skills to get a job eventually. So, so I feel like Joburg is, is getting a little dense, but you're saying we can actually, we can actually uh, take that further. And, and of course, we should get used to rich and poor living together. That, that yes, was always the exactly, idea. That's exactly Which that's we it. haven't really implemented. No, that you have not implemented because it takes a long time to change cities. But there are a lot of efforts in that regard. And you can do many things to raise, uh, raise your towers, make public transportation yeah. more efficient. Uh, and, and bring some mixed city, some social mixed city in the, in the cities, yes.
since you're only saying 1.4%, uh, you were saying maybe the quality counts, but mm. th this is so low. Does it mean all the euphoria about the political changes, about changes to state-owned entities in this country have maybe been overblown? Well, first of all, uh, we would be happy to be wrong. I mean, uh, we'd be happy yeah. to be wrong and to and see growth it's higher. It's conservative. Yeah, uh, what we've seen is a boost in confidence. That's one, but we have not seen yet investment uh, uh, accelerating. And, and very recent indicators of today on manufacturing or on business confidence are showing some wait and see attitude uh, yeah. for many investors. We are saying that uh, uh, return to uh, objective of debt stabilization, improved governance is, in SO is, is very important. It's very important to protect the situation, but that we may, may not create the additional growth or jobs that you want, yeah. but you, you don't want to see the situation deteriorate further. So, so it's a plus, it's a plus. It's, you stabilize the situation, but then you need to move okay. to the next stage. Okay, so we're not going backwards anymore, but we need to go The risk of forwards. going backwards yeah. Lower, yeah. I, I was very interested, you look at which sectors did well last year to, in, to make these predictions. Yeah. Agriculture and mining, yeah. uh, but not our factories. Does that add to the, the narrative that that in a sense we're de-industrializing. You are, yeah, you are de-industrializing because you're not competitive enough and one of the big problems is skills. When you, when you see that if you're able to reduce the skill constraint, bringing more skills to the economy, your manufacturing sector becomes much more competitive. And it's only 0.2%, but how do we deal with the robots coming if our manufacturing sector is contracted? So this is also a discussion that, that, that we had a bit uh, in, in our last report. There's still a lot of scope for innovation in South Africa that will create jobs. You, and it's a combination. You need to innovate all the time to stay competitive and you need more robots and we are using robots everywhere. Our washing machines are robots as well. Uh, but it, in, in South Africa, there's still a lot of space to create some jobs through innovation. So it's not a, it's not a threat at, at the moment. All right. Mm. All right. So generally positive, even though we have this, this really low uh, prediction. Mm. You, you talk about the debate around land expropriation. What, mm. what are you seeing there? I mean, it, it's... Uh, all this debate about resource contestation more broadly, uh, uh, as we said earlier, is a, it might be seen as a, uh, um, an element of policy uncertainty because investors, they don't see where uh, the future of their investment in terms of they, will they keep it, what, will they be taxed, etc. Mm. So it's very important to keep property rights. At the same time, of course, there's an element of justice uh, for this country, a social compact that needs to be strengthened, and that might participate to it. We don't have a view on land reform as such and expropriation because we don't know about the implementation. We don't know if it's, or it's going to be reviewed by the constitution. It's really political as well. It is not really our business. So right now, a, a possible deterrent to investment is, is what it, you're saying. That's it, all you it, it weakens property rights. When you're talking about expropriation, by definition, it, it weakens property rights. Yeah. So, so investors might, might consider investing uh, on the land, putting more equipment, etc. They might, they might have a second thought on it, of course. All right. Thank you very much for explaining. Hopefully we'll have a bit more economic growth. Uh, that we was Sebastian Dissus from the World Bank. Now markets rally.